Uh, so uh, this year the main um, focus really has uh, continued to be on the Eurozone, um, although having said that, yesterday we saw some uh, GDP figures coming out of the UK um, which recorded a, a, a marked downtrend in uh, expectations there. So we were expecting a, a, a negative 0.2% uh, GDP figure for the second quarter um, and it actually came in uh, down 0.7%. Um, the reasons given for this by the, uh, the UK Information um, Office was um, due to poor weather um, throughout the summer period as well as uh, the Jubilee holiday. Uh, whether you believe that or not is uh, another matter but um, it led to a bit of a um, sell-off in the 10-year um, bond. Um, so if you look at the 10-year Treasury um, you can see uh, we actually hit new uh, fresh lows uh, this week um, at about 1.4%. Um, part of the reason for that is as investors continue to look for a safe haven um, away from equities. Um, this was um, actually um, superseded or, or post the event of the GDP figures and um, we had some comments coming out of um, Mario Draghi, um, the ECB president. Um, he came out and said uh, yesterday afternoon that um, we can expect um, the ECB to do anything to protect the single um, currency. Um, so as you can see on the chart on screen, um, this is the Spanish uh, index, so the, the IBEX. Um, we saw a dramatic um, bounce in, in the level of that, um, actually close to approaching kind of break-even levels for the week. Um, it was a, a very large bounce and you can see that bounce also um, in the um, Italian and Spanish bonds. So if you look um, on the chart again, you can see um, we reached um, fresh Euro era highs for the Spanish 10 year bond um, at over 7.5%, but those were quickly retraced um, when the Mario Draghi comments came out. Um, along with the Mario Draghi comments, we also saw earlier in the week, actually on Tuesday, um, the Spanish um, and Italians trying to implement or implementing a shorting ban. The Italians implemented a, a short ban purely on financials and insurance stocks, so banking and insurance stocks, while the Spanish actually implemented a um, shorting ban across um, all equities. And there is of course a knock-on effect from that to um, some indices, so the IBEX for example and um, also the Euro stocks. Um, if we just move on to um, the corporate side of things, um, we're basically about halfway through the US reporting season at the moment mm -hmm. and there are a few stocks of um, larger note. Um, one of the kind of the big news stories of the week was Zynga, which is the um, games-based platform which um, sells its uh, games through Facebook. Um, the Facebook platform. Um, they basically have uh, revenue sharing um, agreements to advertise via Facebook and it is quite a, a large constituent of Facebook revenues. Um, as you can see on the chart they they reached 14, 14 and a half dollars at their high um, and they were actually down about 40 percent post their earnings. Um, this was due to um, a miss on both revenues and um, the EPS figure. So they've actually come back from $14 to, to where they are at the moment which is just over $3. Um, this had a bit of a knock-on effect to Facebook who also had their um, first set of earnings results since becoming a public company. Um, even though the figures, at the, the revenues actually were slightly better than analysts expected at the top end of, rain, of the range, um, just the knock-on effect from Zynga and, and how revenues are starting to um, be destabilised there um, actually led to Facebook being um, down about 10% post-trade yesterday which is uh, when they announced the figures. Just looking onto a couple of our um, covered stocks, Apple um, also had their, their uh, figures out um, a little bit earlier this week. Um, they actually missed on both revenues and earnings, um, which is the first time for a while. Um, they were basically citing um, the expectation of the iPhone 5 release, which was hitting sales. Um, they contributed or, or had 25 point um, sorry, uh, 26 million, uh, 26 million um, iPhone sales in the second quarter. Now if you compare that to one of our latest additions to the uh, research list of Samsung, they actually um, had a, a great set of figures. Um, they became the world's 
number one phone vendor in the second quarter. They have 25.7% of the um, mobile phone market around the world. And on top of that, the Galaxy 3 release led to them selling 50.5 million units versus Apple's 26 million units. Obviously, once we see the iPhone 5 release, then I'm sure Apple will hope to see those uh, figures continue to grow. Um, but at the moment, Samsung seem to have the upper hand um, in that field. This is just a chart of uh, Samsung share price. You can see Apple close to its, um, still close to its all-time high above $600, um, and, and, and Samsung's actually had a, a, a similar um, return over the last uh, year or so. Um, just moving back to this side of the pond, um, if we look at um, the banks, um, this is just a comparative chart of the bank's performance. Obviously Barclays, who were the first bank to uh, accept responsibility for the LIBOR um, fixing scandal, um, have had a pretty torrid um, time of it over the last couple of weeks. Um, they had their results out this morning. Um, they were a decent set of figures. Um, they beat figures, they were up about 5% um, at present. Um, they beat on both revenues and on EPS, um, but they are still struggling to find a replacement for the CEO and chairman. Um, and until I think we see a, uh, a solution there, then it will continue to be a, um, a volatile place to be. But at present, they've, they've bounced from the 140 level, which is where they were immediately after the LIBOR scandal, um, back up to about 160, which is where they stay this morning. So um, we've got more, uh, more US results coming over the next week. Um, but f for the time being, that's, um, that's about it. Thank you.